The use of these tools is all about the better management of our food systems. This is the big role of information technology. How can we better manage our food systems? So here are five potential entry points where I think earth observation and geoinformation science can be used to improve food security and to improve the management of our food systems. The first one is to quantify the problem, put it on a map. Where is the problem? How big is it? Can we visualize it? Can we get a sense of the size of the problem? Once we understand that, can this spatial and temporal information help us to make informed decisions that are going to address the problem? Now we know where the problem is. What can we do about it? What's driving the problem? What are the factors? What are the constraints? Many of these things can also be estimated or determined with geospatial and temporal information can also guide us then where and when to act upon those decisions. So this is the kind of spatial and temporal information really being put into practice. Let's do something here based on the information we have. Once those decisions have been implemented and those actions have been taken, we'd like to know something about how well did those actions work? What impact did they have? So we can measure the changes over time due to those actions. And again, we can do this with spatial and temporal information. And it doesn't stop there. It's a continuous process of revising and improving our management of food systems. Every solution that we try to implement can often lead to another problem. We then need to solve that problem with another solution. And so on and so on in a cycle as we get better and better at managing these systems. Let's give a quick example of how you might quantify the problem. So let's think about mapping where yields are lower than expected. I showed in the previous lecture an example of where this has been done by other researchers, showing very detailed maps of the variability in yield. And you could see areas where they were much lower than others. Then you want to support informed decisions that are going to address that problem. How do we increase those yields? We need to understand the factors. Why are the yields low? Is it to do with soil properties? Is it to do with access to fertilizers? Is it to do with farmers planting inappropriate varieties or planting them at the wrong time? They may all help explain why the yields are low. Then we can guide action, where and when to act upon those decisions. So where would you use improved varieties? Where would you suggest to plant earlier? Where would you think you need better soil nutrition management methods? If those changes are implemented, we want to see what's happened. We can map the yields before and after the interventions. Did things change because of these changes and improvements? If not, why not? Then maybe we have to go back and rethink what we're doing. And this is the whole monitoring progress, the last step. So basically, we can monitor yields over time, compare the impacts of different interventions, and improve and fine-tune the targeting of these interventions to the right place. So those are just five examples of how you could use geospatial and temporal information to improve food security.